All right, how's it going, y'all? So DSM 7.3 has been released, and today we're gonna to be going over the release notes and also testing out some of the really cool new features. <laughs> cool is an interesting term for that, in which we are should be able to put whatever drives we want in our systems again and have them build the volume. This right here is a DS925+, and if I am running it on DSM 7.2, I am not going to be able to add this random WD red four terabyte drive to it. But now that DSM 7.3 is released, we should be able to add it. And DSM 7.3 also brings out something I'm really excited for, storage tiering. All right, so quick interjection here from Will from the future. This tiering is not just all in one NAS. It actually supports working off two different NASs. So we're definitely going to be testing that on out. I clear this all up further in the video, but it does have the ability to actually work off of multiple NAS units together. Storage tiering can kind of be thought of as a bit of a SSD caching, except more. With storage tiering, you essentially have two different volumes that act as one, an SSD volume and an HDD volume. Then the files are actually moved between the two based off of a set of parameters. So you can say, hey, if a file is being accessed, bring it back up. And if it's not accessed in X number of days, bring it down to the HDDs and other options like that. It allows you to have your most frequently newest files always on SSDs. And then as they're not needed anymore, they're still available, but on hard drives. So they're just going to be a little bit slower, but it really gives you that ability to have a massive overall capacity. And the performance is gonna be much closer to that of an SSD only volume because for the files you're accessing, in the ideal world, it's pretty much only SSDs. And so it is a little different than SSD caching because with SSD caching, the source of truth is always the actual mechanical hard drives. So with tiering, the source of truth actually becomes the SSDs when they're in there. So to start this off, we're going to go through the release notes and then we're going to show you how to download and update it. So the important notes up here is not too interesting, but we do see that these units are the last ones that will be getting these automatic updates. So these units right here, all the way up to the 19 series are not going to auto update. So you'll have to manually update. So this is how Synology kind of does a phased end of life for these units. They basically are saying, hey, this is compatible, but we're not in depth testing it. And so update at your own risk. So for systems that are never really touched, they don't get the automatic update, but you can update manually just as I'm about to do here. And it looks like we're going all the way back to the 16 series J models. All of these units are still getting security updates. They just don't get the automatic feature updates in here. And we can also see right here, all the way up to the 19 series, this will be the last DSM update for these. So 7.3 will be the last feature update for up to the 19 series, which at this point is about six years old but it is definitely starting to creep up on that. So I'm guessing whenever DSM 8.0 rolls out that these units will not be able to upgrade to it, which funny enough, I'm still running a major portion of my business off of a DS 18, 19 plus. That thing has just been a tank and I've never had to upgrade it. Here we can also see that continuation of them dropping support for the H.265 and H.264 codecs. So this is where they basically are no longer paying those license fees for that. And so, Basically, if your phone photos are H.264, H.265, it will not transcode them for you. The way they're doing this with Synology Photos is you actually have the mobile device that already has paid for this license do the transcoding for thumbnails and things like that. It's not as big of a deal. I don't actually run into it really being that issue when I'm deploying it with clients. Certain people, it's really annoying for, but for the majority of people I found, if your phone's taking these photos and it's uploading through Synology Photos, it's already building a thumbnail there. So it's not a huge impact, but for people who are relying on that, this really does suck. And Petaspace, which I don't think a lot of people have ever dealt with, has reached end of life. Petaspace was kind of where they were using multiple volumes together and growing it out. It was only really on the first release of the H6500s. And I think also some of their SAS units. I never actually deployed any of them. I worked on a couple that were deployed already and it was pretty janky it didn't have snapshots it had a lot of features missing and instead they've switched over to a much more traditional lvm for that kind of thing and it has officially reached end of life which probably just means it's not supported but i don't think it's going to room out those volumes 
There's also some just general updates and PHP 8 is no longer supported. Really only important if you're running like a WordPress site, make sure you first upgrade that thing to 8.2 or 8.3, whatever you want to do. One thing that I've not seen here, and I assume it would be on what's new. It's not really new, it's really old, but the ability to add third party drives once more that was in the press release, but I have not seen it just yet here. Otherwise there's specific things. XFAT is no longer going to have to be installed which is quite nice, it's been annoying. You've got the ability to automatically postpone updates. So that way you can say, let me be 14 days behind. So if there is a major issue, somebody else has to deal with it first. That tiering I mentioned, and some really niche pieces here. Seven, I think is my most excited for having the ability for OTP emergency codes to be sent by email is really useful. I've had a lot of people who have run into this exact issue, they set up two-factor authentication and they've got the OTP. They then format their phone, they get a new phone, they don't realize that that stuff needs to be transferred over. And then we have to do a soft reset and ask it back in. Having this as a backup email, I'm really hoping it comes from their own mail servers, just like the notifications do, would be really, really useful to have. And I'm guessing that's what they've put in here. And then some basically just some CVEs and some cleanup stuff. All right, let's actually go in. And first I'm gonna throw in this eight terabyte WD red drive, and we are going to check it out in DSM 6.2. All right, so I'm running DSM 7.2, and this is a DS925 plus. So in a moment here, we should find that this drive that I just added in cannot be used for anything. It is not on the compatibility list. We cannot do anything with it. We cannot create a storage pool because it is not on the compatibility list. And that was the major update to the 2025 models that sucked for people. And finally, after months of Synology losing a ton of face and probably a ton of customers, they have actually walked it back in DSM 7.3. So after I update this, we should be able to add that drive on in. The way we go about updating, if it's not shown up in your system yet, which it won't for a couple of weeks, to kind of stage these things on out, we can come into the download center and just put in your model number and then we're just going to download it. Then we're going to come in over here and we're going to do a manual DSM update to test this thing on out. So we just found that package on there. I had already downloaded. This is still very new. It's not beta. They don't really do that anymore, but this right here is a very new package. So I would not recommend doing this on a key production system unless there's critical functionality you really need. Now, that being said, there is not that much stuff that's really changed in this update. There's nothing in here that I would say looks like it's going to be breaking. The one thing that I probably would not do just yet on a major production system is the tiering. Just tiering is complicated. Tiering has the ability for things to go wrong. And so unless you have a really big need or really want to test it out, I would probably not recommend deploying tiering just until some people have some time to test it, just so it's not something that messes you up. All right, so while we're waiting for this update to finish, we can actually see that the tiering actually works across multiple different NAS units, which is really interesting. So if you have multiple NASs, you can actually tier them together. It looks like from this documentation, we can only actually have two of them, definitely be investigating more of them, but essentially where you are actually able to run as a hot tier is a primary NAS that's higher performance, and then a cold tier where it is a larger unit that is bigger. And so this process is much more in depth and may be really useful for people deploying these massive NASs. But we are now up to date and we're going to go ahead and check some of this stuff on out. All right. So the first thing I want to test out is going in and let's see what we can do with our storage manager. We can see that that drive, which was previously red, has now gone healthy and green. So you are now going to be able to add in third party drives. I wish I had some of those new 28 terabyte drives. Seagate, if you're watching this and you want to send some to me, that'd be awesome. But I'm assuming it will work with that as well. I've seen no indicators that those would be locked out. And so you will be able to add in third party drives to this. But we also want to check out a couple of the other updates. And so also in this case, once again, I updated pretty much as soon as possible. We did get an issue where active backup for business did not continue. And I just want to show you really quick how to fix that. What we've got to do is come into the downloads and go into the packages. 
and download the active backup for business for 7.3. This is a great fallback plan and also allows you to install Synologies on a closed network with no internet. But for times where something like this has happened, who knows what happened and why it was not able to auto update, we're just going to come in, do our manual install. All right, so that's pretty much it for DSM 7.3. No major shifts to it. A couple of key things with the storage manager there and the tiering, which is still in beta, but I'm very excited to test. By far the biggest thing is that ability to just finally go back and install whatever drive you want into into these systems. The only thing I've not been able to test, unfortunately, is actually doing this out of a box. So because of the way these NASes work, I'm not sure if you get shipped a unit that was previously installed with DSM 7.2 because you bought it new and it, that's what came with it, if you will be able to use third-party drives in order to install it to update it. We will have to see about that. I don't have any units I, I can use to test that, unfortunately, but we will definitely be testing that out in the future. And stay tuned for those tiering videos. I will be checking those on out as well. And if you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. If you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.